Deadpool and Wolverine's been out for almost a week now, which means everybody on the planet has seen it already, because that's how the internet works. And because it is the internet, we have to do a top 10, because we have to celebrate things in orders of 10. And this was actually challenging for me to put together because Deadpool and Wolverine is hilarious from front to back. So coming up with my top 10 funny moments from the movie, almost an impossible task. But uh, I persevered and here we are today. I'm here to give you my top 10 Deadpool and Wolverine moments and there are going to be spoilers aplenty. So tread lightly, sailor. Don't know why I called you a sailor, but let's begin. <laughs> Coming up with a top 10 list was no easy task. It, oh, wait, what's what's this? What's this right here? <laughs> That's a notification to subscribe to the channel, which you should absolutely do because I post movie content every single week. You have to be here for it or you're going to miss it. And that's just, that's just absurd. All right, let's begin. In number 10, because you have to start with the worst and get to the first, I'm going to be doing all of the MCU jokes in this film. Specifically, how much Deadpool seems to hate the MCU's multiverse attempt. Wade Wilson is a man of the people. He's the Marvel Jesus, self-proclaimed. And he knows, just like you and I, that the multiverse has been kind of a mess, to put it lightly. But listening to a salty middle-aged prick cry about it on YouTube doesn't quite hold the same weight as listening to a salty middle-aged guy in a Deadpool costume say it in a big-budget movie. And so that's where we have Ryan Reynolds knocking the MCU multiverse attempt and this new phase. What a disaster it's been. Funny stuff, and it kind of carries throughout the movie. It's an ongoing joke, much like the MCU has become. In number nine, I'm putting all of this pretty much in one big pot, the cameos. This film is chock full of them, ranging from Oh wait, that's Pyro from X-Men 2 and 3? Didn't even realize that for the first half hour he was in it. All the way to holy shit, they got Wesley Snipes back as Blade. This is freaking awesome. But this isn't the top 10 coolest moments, it's top 10 funniest. Of course, there's overlap. There's always gonna be overlap. But if we could nail it down a little bit, I'm specifically talking in this case about some of the great lines each of these prominent characters get. Electra, Blade, Gambit. They each get one or two hilarious moments. With Blade, he references his comments about ice skating uphill from Blade 1. That, that became a meme. That became a thing, I guess. <laughs> That's his character now. Honestly, it was a little forced in the film, I thought. But damn it, just having Wesley Snipes there, I have to give him some props. Elektra gets the best jab of the film. Jennifer Garner was married to Ben Affleck for many years. They have kids together. So when they bring up how Daredevil is dead in this universe... She's just kind of like, eh, I'm okay. I'm, I'll, I'll get over it. Just good stuff. Meta commentary layered on top of each other. You gotta love it. It's what Deadpool's all about. And when it comes to Gambit, pretty much everything he says is hilarious. He's got that thick Cajun accent. Deadpool can't understand a word of it, and he has no problem pointing it out every chance he can. In the number eight spot is the Wolverine montage. Seeing all these different Logan variants is not only awesome, it's often played for laughs. You have him nailed to a cross like Jesus, surrounded by bodies everywhere. It's very dark. Deadpool just bounces instantly. He's like, I I'm, I'm not having any of this. You have Henry Cavill playing the character, the fan cast, Superman, the Man of Steel, back in action this time as Logan. He looked kind of weird. I'm not going to lie to you, I thought he looked a little off, but uh, I'm sure the ladies appreciated the shirtless pick, regardless. But my favorite by far is Hugh Jackman turning around at the bar, hopping off the stool, and we realizing he's like four feet tall. <laughs> Clearly a nod to the fact that fans for many, many years were pissed that Hugh Jackman was cast as Wolverine, because Wolverine in the comics is like five foot five or something. He's a, he's a short dude, he's a short guy. And Jackman's well over six foot, he's like six three, six four. he's a tall drink of water. So you got both. You get the best of both worlds. You get Hugh Jackman's awesome acting chops, now in condensed form. At number seven, I'm going with Wade Wilson kind of auditioning to be an Avenger. He, he travels to their universe using Cable's time-turning device. He speaks with Happy Hogan, who has a glow up again. He keeps getting raises. He uh, started out as a driver for Tony Stark. Look where he's at now. Doing interviews for potential Avengers. I'm not sure that's better than head of security, which he was at one point, but we'll move past it. This entire scene really showcases both the acting chops of Ryan Reynolds 
end of John Favre. They bounced dialogue off of each other so effortlessly. The jokes all landed for me. Reynolds Deadpool is constantly knocking Happy for being a driver at one point. He keeps going back to it while he's trying to impress the guy. He just cannot stop himself from being a dick. I love it. Hogan is very much keeping up with him. He's along for the ride because he was a driver at one point, so he's knocking him back just as hard. This whole scene, flawlessly done. There's a reoccurring Thor gag that I laughed at every single time. It's it's so stupid that it's funny, like a lot of the stuff in here, but that's where I like to live, the so stupid it's funny jokes. Deadpool's at the TVA, he sees all the Avengers up on the screen, most of the stuff we've seen before, except for this one prominent screen that's showing Deadpool being cradled in the arms of Thor, the mighty Thor himself who's crying, he's so sad. And Wade is, is heartbroken. He's like, why is Thor crying over me? He randomly goes back to this. It keeps him up at night, but he never gets an answer. And in turn, neither do we, which somehow makes it even more funny. A lot of Marvel movies as of late have unapologetically been sponsored by a band or something ridiculous. In Thor Love and Thunder, they constantly name drop Guns N' Roses. It, it's so obnoxiously done, ham-fisted at best, insulting at worst. With Deadpool and Wolverine, the Honda Odyssey is the unsung hero of this film. Clearly some sort of cross promotions taking place. It, it's pretty obnoxious, but at the same time fits so perfect with something Deadpool would do. And this is going to lead to one of the big climaxes of the movie, not that kind, where we get the second Deadpool v Wolverine showdown in the Honda Odyssey. They kick the living shit out of each other, die several times over, and this thing goes all the way through the night. And it ends with a great punchline from Deadpool pointing out just how spacious this vehicle is. Earlier in the film, he was trying to sell these things, poorly trying to sell them, but now he gets to appreciate the Odyssey and all of the comforts it comes with. If only he knew then what he knew now, he might have sold one. In the final act of the movie, Deadpool goes up against his toughest challenge to date, himself, 100 times over. Nova opens a portal and what comes out on the other side is not a pretty picture. 100 Deadpools attack, ranging from a flying skeleton to baby pool. And this sequence is laugh out loud, not only because of the concept behind it, watching Logan and Wade Wilson fight all these assholes, but also the way it's shot. We have a one take going from left to right as they smash through buses, flip over cars, it's all done so well, and it never loses the humor along the way. My only hang up with this scene is we didn't get Baby Pool in action. They teased it, but they left us wanting more. Around this time, we also get Nice Pool returning. Also, played by Ryan Reynolds. He's got long flowing hair. He's just a beautiful person inside and out. The friendliest Deadpool or person you'll really ever meet. Deadpool Prime, not so interested in that. He's really only into the double guns this guy's rocking. Gorgeous golden guns that Wade wants for himself. And his little dog, too. Dogpool is hideous beyond all belief. He is frightening to look at. But goddammit, Deadpool loves him. And since there's a whole army of Deadpools about to rain down bullets on him, he finds this a perfect opportunity to use his counterpart as a human shield. <laughs> he runs him along the bullets taking every shot, realizing that, oh shit, this guy doesn't heal like I do? Huh? Oh well, perfect opportunity to get those guns, and he just keeps using them. All while playing off, it's an accident, and he can't believe what's happening. It's just done so well. Contrasting this is Logan, who's looking on, just disgusted by this whole thing playing out. He's not fooled by any of this. I lumped all the cameos together, but I specifically left one out that was just so ingenious, so... Chef's Kiss Perfect had to have its own spot. And that is Chris Evans showing up as Captain America, but not really. It was such an obvious joke too, I kind of am mad at myself I didn't see it coming. Right after Deadpool and Logan are thrown to the wasteland, they see Chris Evans in the distance. He's rocking a duster. Part of his arm is showing, so you see that iconic blue sleeve peeking through, only to realize it's not the blue from Captain America. It's the blue suit from Johnny Storm, AKA the Human Torch. The Fantastic Four character Evans played like 20 years ago. And even though he's Johnny Storm, he's not really him. He's playing this 
bizarre version of the character. This version is kind of an obnoxious dick. He's got a Brooklyn accent, I think. I'm not really sure what he's going for. He reminded me of Dennis Leary from The Ref, or just Dennis Leary in general, especially when he goes off in his tangent after the credits end. He's a funny character though, and he actually had more screen time than I expected. It was always nice when he showed up. Evans does a great job playing a jerk just as much as he does playing a hero. Definitely one of the biggest highlights of the picture, but not quite number one. My number one favorite comedy bit from this film is the opening credits. Deadpool's always had a terrific opening number, but the first two movies pale in comparison to this. Watching him desecrate the grave of Logan, pick up his lifeless corpse, dust it off and use the adamantium undercarriage to beat the living shit out of TVA guards is peak cinema. And if that wasn't enough, which it absolutely is enough, it gets doubly funny because we have InSync's Bye 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 playing over the top. So Ryan Reynolds not only killing people left and right, he's also taking some time to bust out some great dance moves, which are one-to-one -one with the music video back in the day. And I know this, because I, I recently researched it for this video. I didn't know it before this. This is the first time I, I, I saw the video ever in my life. Ever. Even though I think Deadpool and Wolverine from a story perspective is kind of a shit show. It's that way by design, of course. It's all washed away by the freaking hilarious jokes throughout. The great gags, the wonderful set pieces, and just all of the cameos that come and go throughout this film make it a joy to watch. And again, making a top 10 funniest moments is, is a hard thing to do because there are so many moments in this that I could have thrown in the list. This is where you come in. I'd love to hear from you. Please comment below your top 10 moments or maybe just one that I didn't mention in this video so we're not so redundant. Let me know your top three or your top one or your top 50. That, that's fine too. I'd be very impressed if you could come up with 50. Like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't. I would love if you stuck around for more videos. I post them every single week multiple times. If you really like what I'm doing, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I complain about first world problems like people talking on their phone in public really loudly or listening to their TikTok videos with no headphones. I hear you, Mary, and I'm not impressed. All right, let me, let me eat my Chipotle in peace. If you really like what I'm doing, you can leave a super thanks right under this video, become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or a YouTube join member right here. It's, it's, it's easy, it's just a click away. And I would appreciate it. Take care.